Hmm. Earthshaker. I think this machine would be a lot better if it was a Richie Kotzen game. there in VCR land. I'm Richie and in this hour I'm going to be showing you licks from string skipping and tapping to legato licks and some sweeping and exotic scales. So hear me now, believe me later, we're going to have a good time but before we dive into the fun stuff it'd probably be a real good idea to tune up. So here's a high E. B. G. D. A and the low E. If you're familiar with my playing, you know I do a lot of licks where I don't use a pick at all. And in this section, I'm going to show you some of my favorite legato licks and exercises. So you too can play licks without picks. This first one takes place only on the third string, and it's in C major. We'll start out by hammering on E on the third string, pulling off to C, hammering on D, hammering on E, and then pulling off to D, and pulling off to C. And we have a lick that sounds like this at a slow tempo. And if we speed it up, Another variation on that exercise that I do involves three more notes on the fourth string, and that's B, A, and G. So we'll start out with that lick, and then hammer on B, A, and G. And basically what this does is kind of emphasizes one of the harder parts about legato playing. A lot of times when you're doing legato licks, you might find yourself picking the first note of the next string, like when you go from the third to the fourth string, or the fourth to the third. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you should be able to go to the strings without picking at all, so like you can wave at your mom or something in the audience while you're playing. So let's hear what this lick sounds like at a slow tempo. And if we take it up to speed. Another legato lick that I use involves uh, some sliding with your first finger and also going across the strings between the third and fourth string. We'll start out by hammering on from C to E on the third string. We're still in C major. At that point, we're going to pull off to C again and do the first pattern that I showed you. So we have something that sounds like this. And from there, we're going to slide from C down to B. Hammer on C again. Hammer on D. Pull off to C and pull off to B and then hammer on the fourth string to A, pull off to G, and then pull off to F sharp, and then slide with your first finger from F sharp to G, and then hammer on A, and hammer on B. Now with this lick, we only pick C in the beginning of the lick, so we're only picking one time, and the rest is all hammer-ons and pull-offs, or sliding with your first finger. 
So let's check this out at a slow tempo. And if we take that up to speed, it sounds like this. This next lick is a variation on that exercise, only in a descending scale form in A major. We're going to start out by omitting the first hammer on, so we'll start with our fourth finger on F sharp on the 14th fret. And then we're going to pull off from F sharp to D, hammer on E, hammer on F sharp, pull off to E, pull off to D, and slide down to C sharp, and continue the same pattern, hammering on D, hammering on E, pull off to D, pull off to C sharp, and then hammer on B on the second string, pull off to A, and then pull off down a half step to G sharp. At this point, if we we're following the other pattern exact, we'd slide up with our first finger, but we're not going to do that. We're going to take it down into the next octave. So we'll continue the pattern with our fourth finger on the 11th fret and play the same shape. And that'll give us the most F sharp, D, and E. Slide down and get C sharp with your first finger. And then we have C sharp, D, and E in that position. And then we have on the fourth string, B, A, and G sharp. So let's hear what we have so far, the whole lick together. We're going to just continue it now into the last octave and we don't have to shift positions here. We have our fourth finger on F sharp, pulling off to D, hammering on E, hammering on F sharp again, and pulling off, sliding down from D to C sharp, hammering on D, hammering on E, pulling off to D, off to C sharp and then hammering on B in the 6th string, pulling off to A, and pulling off to G sharp. So let's hear the whole thing at a slow tempo. And up to speed. On the way up, we're going to do a different shape. We're just going to take the first legato lick I showed you in the beginning and do that in A major in octaves. So we'll have our fourth finger on C sharp and then uh, pull off to A, hammer on B, hammer on C sharp, and then pull off to B and pull off to A. So we have this pattern. And then we'll do that same shape on the fifth string and that'll give us some notes F sharp, D, and E. And then move the whole thing up a whole step and we'll have the same notes only an octave higher which would be C sharp, B, and A. And then the third string, F sharp, D, and E. And then slide up again so that our fourth finger is on the 14th fret and do the same shape. And that's the end of the lick. And now we can hear what they sound like connected. And up to speed. You're probably wondering how I'm playing this lick without the strings ringing. Well, I'm muting the high strings with the flesh on my first finger, and I'm muting the low strings with the flesh on my right hand. So let me play this slow for you, and you can see exactly what's going on with the muting technique. <laughs> I'm just sliding my right hand across the low strings to mute them, and the high strings get muted with my left hand. Another variation in that pattern involves a different pattern on the second string. We'll start out by playing this much the same. But instead of hammering on B and pulling off to A and G sharp on the second string, we're going to do that first legato pattern on the second string as well. So let's hear what that sounds like. Let me play it slow so you can hear exactly what I'm doing. This is kind of an unorthodox way of playing a major scale, and we're going to do this in E major. 
So let's hear what the scale sounds like before I show you the lick that I use with it. <laughs> Now with this scale, if you apply the first legato lick that I showed you, we can get a really cool sounding lick. This lick also makes a great picking lick. This lick involves two positions of C major. We're starting off by picking C. So we have. And then we pick F on the fifth string. And then hammer on A. Pull off to F. Hammer on G. Hammer on A. Pull off to G. Pull off to F. And then we repeat the pattern. We hit E again, and then we repeat the pattern on the fifth string. So it would sound like this. Before we go to the next string, we play the last note on the string before. So it would sound... And then we'll shift up. So our fourth finger is on G, and uh, we'll hammer on from E to F, and then hammer on from F to G, and then pull off from G to F, and pull off from F to E. So we have, and then we'll stop on D on the second string. So we're just picking once there, and then pulling off from D to B, hammering on C, and then hammering on D, Pulling off to C and pulling off to B, so it sounds like this. And at this point, we're just continuing the pattern, stopping on A, pulling off to F, and just right down the scale. So let's hear what that would sound like. Now, if we connect both of them, it would sound like this. This final legato lick is going to uh, start out on D in the 10th fret and will be based in G pentatonic. So we'll have a whole step from D to E and a 4 fret spread from E to G. So we have a pretty big stretch there. And then we're going to pull off the same note so we have something that sounds like this. And then we'll go to the 2nd string and pull off from B to A. So we're only playing 2 notes on the 2nd string. And then on the 3rd string we're going to play G, hammer on, and slide from G to E. So we'll sound E by sliding into it. And that would sound like this. At that point, we're going to hammer on from E to G, which is four frets up, and pull off to E, and pull off to D. And then we're going to play two notes on the fourth string, which would be B and A. And then we're going to hammer on G in the fifth string. So let's hear what we have so far. At that point, we're going to come down to E and hammer on E. And then from E, hammer on G, which is four frets up. And then pull off to E, pull off to D. And then hammer on B on the sixth string. And then pull that off to A and slide down to G. So let's hear the whole descending pattern at a slow tempo. Ascending, we're going to start out by sliding from G to A, and then we have a whole step from A to B, and then four frets from B to D, and then we'll repeat D on the fifth string, picking D on the fifth string, and then hammering on to E, and then to G, pulling off to E, pulling off to D, and then stopping on B on the sixth string. 
So it sounds like this. And then we'll continue, go up D, E, and G on the fifth string. And then continue into the next octave, so we have A, B, and D on the fourth string. And then D, E, and G on the third string. And then pull off to D, pull off to E. And then hammer on D on the fourth string. And then pull off and stop at B. So it would sound like this. And then we're going to go back up the scale and continue it into the final octave. So we have A, B, and D. And then on the high E string, we'll have D, E, and G. And then pull off to E, pull off to D. And by this time, we're continuing it into the descending pattern. So let's hear what the whole thing sounds like at the sub-tempo. Up to tempo. The cool thing about these scales is that because of the way they're fingered, we can play one octave on only two strings. So they're three octave scales. The only hard thing is that they involve some pretty wide stretches with your left hand and every now and then there's some big position jumps that you have to make. So uh, people with little hands are going to be jumping around the fretboard but it's nothing you can't get used to. This first scale is kind of like a mixolydian scale without the major third. We'll start out with a whole step from A to B and four fret spread from B to D. At this point we're going to shift positions and play E on the fifth string and then have a whole step from E to F sharp and then a half step from F sharp to G. So with this scale, this is the shape that repeats in the octaves. So once you learn that shape, you basically know the whole scale. It's a matter of just learning how to change the position of it. From there, we don't have to shift positions into the next octave. We're already set up to go right to A on the seventh fret. So we'll play the same shape, and we'll get the same notes, only an octave higher. And then we'll move up a half step so we have our first finger on the 10th fret, and play the same shape. And we'll get the same notes. We have A, B, D, E, F sharp, and G. And the other th neat thing about these scales is that we don't have to change them for descending. It's the same ascending, and it's the same descending. So let's hear what they sound like. This next scale is a dominant 7 scale with a flatted 6, and this would work good over augmented chords. We'll start out with a whole step from A to B, and a whole step from B to C sharp, and uh, we're doing this in A, by the way. At that point, we're going to shift to the 5th string and have a half step from E to F, and a whole step from F to G. And that's the shape. There's not really any wide stretching in there, just uh, one position shift of a whole step. At this point, we go into the next octave on the 4th string, so we have A, B, and C sharp. And then on the third string, we have E, F, G. And then on the second string, A, B, C sharp, and then E, F, G. So let's hear what it sounds like together. Here's a good way of playing a harmonic minor scale in three octaves. We'll do this in the key of A, and we'll start out sliding from A to B on the low E string. And then we'll have a half step from B to C, and a whole step from C to D. We'll then go to the fifth string in the same position, and have a half step from E to F, and then a four fret spread from F to G sharp. At this point, we're going to uh, go to the fourth string and play A, and slide from A to B, a whole step and then have a half step from B to C, and then a whole step from C to D. And then on the third string, we're going to have a half step from E to F, and then four fret spread from F to G sharp. 
So by now you probably realize that we're doing the same pattern, only in octaves. And we're playing four notes on the sixth, fourth, and second string, and three notes on the other strings. So let's hear what we have so far. At this point, we'll move our first finger up a half step. So we're at the tenth fret, second string, playing A. Slide from A to B. And then we have a half step from B to C. And then a whole step from C to D. And then we go to the high E string, and we have E, F, and G sharp. Descending, we're going to use a different shape just for picking E's. We're going to start off by playing G sharp, F, and E, and slide with our first finger down to D. So we're playing four notes in the high E string. And then on the second string, we're going to have C, B, and A, and slide from A to G sharp. And then on the third string, we're going to have only two notes, and those notes will be F and E. <laughs> I made a little rhyme there. And then on the fourth string, we're going to have D, C, and B, and then slide from B to A. And then on the fifth string, we're going to have G sharp, and then four frets down, we'll have F, and then from F, we'll have E. And then we'll go to the sixth string and play D, C, B, and A. So we have the whole scale right there. Let's hear what it sounds like connected at a slow tempo. And up to speed. Just that much of the scale, we can get some really good picking patterns out of that. Let's check it out. This scale is basically a harmonic minor scale without the 6. So since the 6 isn't in there, it could actually work as a melodic minor too. We're going to start out on the 7th. So we'll do this in C major starting on B. So we have B, C, and D on the low E string. Half step from B to C, whole step from C to D. <laughs> and then on the 5th string we'll have D sharp, F, and G. A whole step from G sharp to F, and a whole step from F to G. And then we'll just repeat that in octaves. Starting here on the 9th fret, 4th string, and then starting on the 12th fret, 2nd string. Let's check it out. Before you learn these scales, it's a real good idea to make sure you know all your other scales, like the major and minor scales, and all the positions around the fretboard. You know, you have to have the basics down before you try and attempt something a little crazier. Now it's time for the fun stuff, string skipping and tapping. The reason I put string skipping and tapping together is because a lot of the string skipping that I do incorporates some tapping. This first string skipping lick only incorporates one little tap at the very end, but the lick is in two parts, and it's based around a pentatonic box shape. And we'll start out by uh, doing this in the key of B, and we'll have a four fret spread from B to D. And I'm playing B with my first finger, and D with my third finger. And then we're going to have a whole step from D to E. From there, we're going to skip to the fourth string, and we'll play A, B, and D. I'm going to have a whole step from A to B and a 4 fret spread from B to D. Now we're going to go to the 5th string and play E, F sharp, and A. We'll play the same shape we played on the 4th string. We'll just get different notes. And then we'll skip to the 3rd string and play the same shape. And we'll get different notes. We'll get D, E, and G. G isn't really a part of the pentatonic scale, but it makes the lick sound a little more interesting and plus it's easier to play with that in there because we're using that same shape. So let's hear what we have so far. At this point we'll go to the fourth string and play A, B, and D. And then we'll skip to the second string and play F sharp, A, and B. So we have this much. 
we go to the third string and play D, E, and G, and skip to the high E string and play B, D, and E. The second part, we're going to come up here to the 12th fret and play a whole step from A to B and a 4th fret spread from B to D. And then we'll jump to the 3rd string and have F sharp, G sharp, and A. And slide up and have G sharp, A, and B. And that'll sound like this. And then we'll jump from the 3rd string to the high E string and play E, F sharp, and A. And to finish the lick, we'll have one little tap in on B a whole step above A on the high E string. So let's hear what the whole thing sounds like together. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? This is one of my favorite string skipping tapping licks because it's one of those licks that when you hear it, it's like, what the heck is that? And when someone shows it to you, it's, oh, that's what it was because it's just a lot easier to play than it is when you hear it. We'll start out by tapping A sharp and then pulling that up to C sharp, hammering on E and hammering on G. So we have that definite four fret shape between all our fingers and we're going to keep that positioning throughout the whole lick. So we'll have a pattern that will start out with this tap and then we'll jump to the fourth string in the same position and we'll do a slightly different pattern which would sound like this. So together and then we'll repeat that between the fifth and third string and then repeat that between the fourth and second string and then between the third and first string and we get to this point we're going to go back up hammering on E and hammering on G and then hammering on A sharp and slide up to C sharp and slide down again to A sharp and go back down the pattern G E C sharp and then tap on the third string same position and then pull that off to E hammer on G and hammer on A sharp and then pull off to G and pull back off to E so it sounds a little confusing but it's really not let me play the whole thing in slow tempo and up to tempo this next lick is an example of applying string skipping to arpeggios over a chord progression start out by tapping G on the fifth fret and we're going to pull off to A hammer on C and hammer on E so we have an A minor 7 arpeggio and the pattern we're going to do will sound like this so we have, that's the pattern. We'll take that and repeat that in the next octave. So this is where the string skipping is going to come in. We'll skip the fourth and third string and come up here to the second string. So our first finger is on the tenth fret and we have A, C, E and tapping G. From there, we're going to go to C major, and the notes there we have E, G, and I'm also adding the 6 in there, A, and then we're going to tap C, and then jump to the high E string, move the whole thing down a whole step, and we have that same pattern, and then do the exact same shape, only between the 5th string and the 2nd string. So we're at the same fret and everything, we're just on a different string. And then the final one is going to be on the fifth string, tapping D, pulling off the G, hammering on A, which in this case will be the nine since we're doing a G major arpeggio, and then our third, fourth finger will be on B, and then we'll skip to the third string, move it up a whole step, and do the same thing in the last octave. So let's hear the whole lick at a slow tempo. And if we take it up to speed. This is a technique I use for playing fast one octave arpeggios. And we'll do this one in A major. We'll start out with E on the third string, which will be the fifth. And then on the second string, we'll have the root. And on the 
high E string, we'll have C sharp, which is the major third, and then we'll have the fifth again in octaves on the high E string. So we have this kind of shape. And where the tapping comes in is tapping the high A, which would be the octave of the root. And the way I'm picking this is that my right hand, I'm kind of sweeping the first three strings, the first three notes, hammering on from C sharp to E, and then tapping A, and then pulling off from A to E, and pulling off from E to C sharp, and then going back down. And the way down, I'm not picking at all, I'm just hammering on. So if we play it slow, it would sound like this. And if we speed it up. When I get it going fast like that, I just most of the time don't even pick it. But it's good to start off by picking it. The cool thing about doing these arpeggios like this is just by changing your right hand, you can get different notes. For example, you can get a major 7 sounding arpeggio just by tapping G sharp with your right hand. And that sounds like this. At the end there, I added G sharp on the second string too to bring out more of a major 7 sound. Here's a lick which incorporates that technique and string skipping. We'll start out on G on the low E string, and we're going to do a triplet between G and F sharp. And then we're going to skip to the high E string, so we have the biggest skip you can make on the guitar. And we're going to tap B, pull off to A, pull off to F sharp, and we're going to have D on the second string, and A on the third string. So that would sound like this. And then we're going to go to the fifth string and have B and A. And then go to the high E string and tap D, pull it off to B, pull it off to G, and then hammer on E. And then we're going to have B on the third string. Now we're going to pivot from D and C sharp to F sharp being tapped on the second string, pulling that off to D, and then pulling that off to B on the second string, hammering on A on the third string, and F sharp on the fourth string. And then we're going to pivot between A and G sharp, and then tap D on the second string, pull off to A, and then hammer on F sharp, and then hammer on D. So let's hear what we have so far. At that point, we're going to pull off from D to B. It'll sound like that. And then we're going to hammer on C and B. We have a triplet there. And then we're going to tap F, pull it off to E, pull it off to C. We're going to have A on the second string and E on the third string. And then the very last one will be G and F sharp. And then tap E, pull off to D, pull off to B. And then we have G on the second string and D on the third string. So let's hear the whole lick in tempo. And there you have it. Up to speed. This lick is craziness at its best. This is a string skipping lick, but it's atonal, which means it's based around no key. So when you hear it, it's going to sound like something out of the Twilight Zone. Let me play it for you, and then I'll break it down in sections so you can learn it. Okay, let's break it down in sections. That's what I consider section one. Section two. Section three. 
at that speed. This lick is based around the tapping arpeggio technique. And let me play it slow for you, and then I'll speed it up. This tapping lick is based around a pentatonic box. Let's do this in the key of F sharp minor. Let me play it for you slow and play it for you fast. That's the pattern that we use throughout the whole lick. So let's get that again. And then we just slide up a whole step and do that pattern between the fourth and fifth string. So it would sound like this. And then just take that between the third and fourth string. And then come up here to the 12th fret. And then to finish it, we're going to tap on B, pull off to E, hammer on F sharp, tap C sharp, and that's the end. So let's hear what it sounds like. Up to tempo. That would work good over like an F sharp minor chord or an A. Let's hear F sharp minor. Or A. Along with string skipping, sweeping is probably one of the most popular ways of playing arpeggios. This first sweep is probably the most common form for a major arpeggio. We'll start out in the key of C major, and we'll have our second finger on C, on the low E string, and then we'll play E, and then we'll bar the tenth fret, and play G. So E and G are on the fifth string, and we're playing C on the fourth string, and then E on the third string, G on the second string, and C on the high E string. So we're barring that fret. And then we'll hammer on E with our pinky. Slide up. So we have our fourth finger on G and pull off to E. And then we have C on the second string, G on the third string. And then we have E on the fourth and C on the fifth, G on the fifth, and then E on the sixth string. So if we combine them together, it sounds like this. And if we take it up to speed. Now that you know those basic shapes, let's try applying that in a melodic sense. We'll take C major. And from there, slide with our first finger, or with our second finger rather, to F major, which would be the same shape, only we'd be in playing F major. And from there, descend on C major. And we're going to use a different shape here for C major. We'll have C with our fourth finger, and then G with our first finger on the high E string, and then bar so we can play E, C, and G. 
and then we'll have E and C on the fifth string. And then we're going to add in A, just so it'll make it easier to switch down to G major, which will be the next arpeggio. So we'll come down C, add the six in, which will be A, and slide from A to G, and go up one G. And from G, we're going to descend on D major, which would involve uh, moving down a whole step from B to A with your fourth finger, and coming down D major. And from D major, the last note will be F sharp, so we'll slide from F sharp down a half step to F, and we'll go up F major, and slide down C major. And there you have a real good exercise and introduction as to how you can apply these forms in a melodic sense. And let's hear what it sounds like at a slow tempo. Repeat it. Let's try it up to speed. When you get up to the G major and D major, I like to add taps in there, and let's hear what that sounds like. I really like that sound. What I'm doing is um, going up G major um, and tapping D and pulling off to B and G and then coming down D major and then going up F major and tapping B and then when I come down C major I'm tapping C first and then coming down C major. So it kind of gives it an interesting sound. I also like to use some more interesting sounding sweeps besides major and minor shapes. Um, this shape is a minor arpeggio, only I included some interesting notes. It's a minor 9 arpeggio with a suspended 4th. Basically, I have B here on the 6th string, D minor 3rd on the 5th string, and then 5 frets up, we have F sharp, which is the 5th, and then we have the dominant 7 on the 4th string, which is A, and then we have C sharp on the 3rd string, and then F sharp on the 2nd string, a on the high E string, and C sharp on the high E string. So at a slow tempo, the arpeggio sounds like this. For a really cool effect, try sliding with your fourth finger from C sharp to D, and that sounds like this. Another version of that arpeggio um, is taking it into another octave. If we start out by keeping this much the same, and slide from C sharp to E, and then we'll have a whole step from E to F sharp, and then we're going to have A on the second string, C sharp on the high E string, and then E on the high E string, and F sharp on the high E string. So we're incorporating more legato techniques in this one. If you'll notice with this lick, descending, I'm not picking at all. I'm using all legato. And I just think it sounds a little smoother that way. This next sweep is going to involve some wide stretches with your left hand. And it's also pretty cool sounding as far as uh, off notes are concerned. We're going to start off with A on the low E string and the major third, C sharp. We have a wide stretch up here to F sharp. In this case, it's going to be the sixth scale degree. And then we're going to go to the fourth string and play the exact same shape, getting the same notes only an octave higher. And then on the second string, we're going to play G sharp. And then on the high E string, we'll play B. And then we'll have E on the high E string as well. So let's check that out at a slow tempo.
thing I do to make it a little more interesting is try doing some hammer ons and pull offs on the top half of the arpeggio. And that sounds like this. Also, do some tapping and sliding and get some really cool effects. And I also had a slide in there from D to C sharp. And then I did the hammer on a pull up and And then slid from F sharp to A. This is one of my favorite sweeps of all time. It's a C sharp minor 7 sweep. And we'll do this in C sharp because it's, it has such a big stretch in it. And if we were to do it in a key like A or something, we'd, it would just be harder to do. So I think it would probably be good as an exercise because he's still stretching and it's still a little easier to play up here in this position. So we'll start out with C sharp on the low E string. And then we'll have E, which would be the minor third, on the fifth string. And we're going to stretch way up here to B on the 14th fret. Stretch those fingers. And we'll repeat the same shape on the fourth and third string, only an octave higher. So we have C sharp, C, and B on the fourth and third string. And then we'll jump up here and play the same thing on the second and first string. And let's hear what it sounds like. Up to tempo. This next sweep is going to involve some legato techniques, some hammer-ons and pull-offs, like some of the others did. We'll start off on A, and we'll have a whole step from A to B. And then we'll have a wide stretch from D to G. So if you play this over G major, it's going to have a major 9 tonality. At this point, we're going to take the same shape only into the next octave, and we'll have a whole step from A to B, and a wide stretch from D to G. The same notes, only an octave higher. And we'll just take that again in the final octave, starting on A, on the second string, 10th fret. And it sounds like this at a slow tempo. Notice on the way down, my right hand isn't doing anything except maybe muting the strings. Let's hear what it sounds like up to tempo. This sweep has all the notes of a D major scale in it, but I like to use it over F sharp minor. It has a really cool tonality. We'll start out with F sharp <coughs> on the sixth string. A on the 5th string, and C sharp on the 5th string. And then we'll have E on the 4th string. And we'll have G on the 3rd string. And then B on the same string, so we're hammering on there. And then we have D on the 2nd string. And then we have E on the high E string. And then G on the same string, and B on the same string, so we have a wide stretch. So let's hear what it sounds like at a slow tempo. Let's check it out again at a fast tempo. This is probably my favorite descending sweep. It actually incorporates a lot of legato techniques also. We'll start out in F sharp minor, and we'll have E, C sharp, and A on the second string, E on the third string, slide down to C sharp, and then we'll have A on the fourth string, F sharp on the fifth string, and then from there we're going to slide down to E and play A major. So we have F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, and A on the low E string, and then slide from A to F sharp. And the whole thing sounds like this. And if we take it up to tempo. With this lick, if you start out on the third string, we can get some interesting effects. Also, if you add some more notes, um, for example, we'll start out on the third string on E, 
hammer on F sharp and continue the lick. When we get to C sharp, hammer on D and E. So we have, and then tap F sharp and try sliding from F sharp to A with your right hand. Let's hear that. <laughs> this sweeping lick kind of involves a unique approach. All the other licks that we showed in this section involve movement of your left hand, but the first half of this lick is going to involve your right hand moving, but your left hand staying in one position on one chord shape. And to give you an example of the potential this technique has, let me play a little piece for you that uh, demonstrates the technique. <laughs> So you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm just keeping a chord shape with my left hand and sweeping certain notes with my right hand. Basically, the technique involves muting the string as soon as you strike it. Like You strike the string and immediately mute it and go to the next string. So the hard thing about that is that a lot of times you might try it and you just sound like you're strumming a chord. And you don't want it to sound like you're strumming a chord. You want it to be definite separation from the notes. Now it's time for the lick. We're going to do this in C sharp minor. And we'll start out with a minor 9 chord. And we'll bar with our first finger on the ninth fret. And from here, we're sliding down E major to C sharp. So let's check it out in the fast tempo. If you add some tapping in there, you can get a really cool effect. I hope you had a good time with this video. I had fun making it. So remember, you slow and uh, when you have it down slow, speed it up. And if you don't, this guy's going to come get you in your dreams. So until next time, see you later.